Welcome to Crypto Mastery Class, where we make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. News, overall market, hot movers in the basket, indicators, and question and answer. I'm Susie, and we've got Joe on the line, and we are going to teach you crypto today and go over some news. Bitcoin dominance breaks apart while Shiba Inu Avalanche at Ethereum Classic Price Gear Up, written by Elena, September 6, 2022, on CoinMedia. Pedia.org. Bitcoin appears to have annoyed the investors as the focus now has shifted to the other altcoins in the market. The asset's dominance has dropped close to 2018 levels, indicating the possibility of revival of a strong alt season in the coming days. The Shiba Inu Shib price continues to trade along the lower support close to 0. 0.00001214 as the volume appears to have dried up notably. The asset is expected to consolidate slightly, quickly make a move beyond 0.0001375 and later test the upper resistance at 0.00001409. However, the price after reaching these levels may face a slight pullback, but eventually rebound firmly. But by the end of the week, by the end of the weekly trade, the price may sustain above the upper resistance and head towards the target at point. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 6. The avalanche price continues to trade within the converging channel and consolidates heavily along the lower support. After experiencing extreme bearish pressure, the price may slice through the consolidation to gain levels close to $30. Before that, the asset may re revisit the lower support below $25 to receive a catapult action to break out from the consolidation. While the bulls still remain distinct and may continue to remain passive until the AVAX price does not make a move above $30. The Ethereum Classic price spike high out of the bull falling wedge ahead of the Bellatrix upgrade. Currently, the price is facing immense bearish pressure, but the bulls appear to be poised to hold the asset above the lower support. However, a significant upswing may elevate the price closer to the pivotal resistance above $44 in the next couple of the days. By the end of the weekly trade, the ETC price is expected to trade close to $50 and experience a minor pullback. Ethereum carries Bitcoin price up. Will the merge live to expectations? By Ronaldo on newsbtc.com. The Bitcoin price has been stuck below 20000 as Ethereum and other altcoins take over the price action and push the sector upwards. Ethereum just deployed the Bellatrix upgrade, the final step before the merge, and the price of Ethereum is blazing through local resistance. At the time of writing, Bitcoin price trades 19900 with sideways movement across the last 24 hours and seven days, respectively. In the meantime, the Ethereum price trades at $1,670 with a 7% and an 8% profit over the same periods, respectfully. The merge will migrate the Ethereum network from proof of work, POW, consensus to a proof of stake, POS consensus. This event, has caused a lot of hype across the crypto markets as some investors believe Ethereum will see more improvements and will enter a new era of adoption. The Saito trader said, Ethereum attempting to break out of a range. The last time it did so, it doubled relative to Bitcoin. If it doubles again relative to Bitcoin, it'll flip, it will flip it. Will Bitcoiners let it happen? or will they merc mercilessly pump Bitcoin to stop the ratio from getting worse? Or will it all dump for a reset? Can Ethereum flip Bitcoin? Trading desk QCP Capital might provide some clues into some of these questions. In a recent report, the firm claims Ethereum price has been correcting after reaching oversold levels in the aftermath of the three arrows capital. 3AC liquidations. Therefore, a lot of the move upward might be the price bouncing back as selling pressure faded and less related to the merge. 
there are two potential bullish factors associated with the merge. The transition will reduce Ethereum's supply issuance while increasing its burning rate. While the former is looking bullish, QCP claims the later is trending to the downside. In other words, the supply is being burned at a slower rate heading into the merge. QCP Capital added, this doesn't change our view on the long-term viability of Ethereum and its consequent bullish impact on price. We think Ethereum will be the asset of the decade. However, it does change the short to medium term price dynamics and how much of the event is already priced in. As the merge approaches, the trading firm will look into Ethereum price mimicking the Bitcoin price halving effect. This could provide trading firm will look into Ethereum price, oh, sorry, the merge, the Bitcoin halving effect. This could provide Ethereum's price performance with further support to reclaim its previously lost territory and continue to push the sector up with it, including the Bitcoin price. Ethereum has been largely outperforming Bitcoin of late as the sentiments in the Ethereum community remain bullish due to the up and coming merge. Notwithstanding, this has not granted the asset any immunity to the recent appropriatious macroeconomic conditions. Ether had established promising support at its 50-day moving average. Nonetheless, the following the market downturn, the asset broke below the support, indicating risk of a further collapse. Katie Stockton, a financial consultant, Fairly Strategy co-founder, highlighted these risks. She further pointed out the weekly stochastics bearish signal, which is declining for the first time in five months. After the market declines began on August 25th, Ether broke below the 1500 support the next day. The unfavorable speech from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell further aggravated the whole situation. Ether fell to 1429 on Monday, its lowest level in August. The asset has since then made some promising movements, but these could be hitting a roadblock soon. If the Bloomberg analyst forecast materializes, Ether could see itself below its major, major support of $1,000 for the first time in over two months. Ether has gained by 5% in the past 24 hours at the time of writing the current trades at 1570 Last on the news is the Cardano article. Cardano, Cardano total value locked on rise as DEX records 2,528% growth in TVL ahead of the Vassal hard fork by Lally on the CryptoBasic.com. News of the up and coming Vassal hard fork has positively affected direct different aspects of Cardano. The price of ADA has been growing steadily with investors expecting the asset price to surge further in the coming days. In the meantime, Cardano's total value locked, TVL, has also gained momentum across various decentralized finance protocols. In a tweet made by Cardano Daily, a Twitter account that shares updates about Cardano project, Cardano's TVL has showed positive growth since the date of the Vassil mainnet launch was announced. The development suggests that the Cardano ecosystem now attracts more investors. The up and coming Vassal hard fork has given them yet another reason to believe in the Cardano project. Vassal's up and coming launch has had positive effects on Cardano. The upgrade is expected to deploy, to deploy on September 22nd, 2022, which may bring more developers and investors to Cardano. ADA's price is up 10% in the past seven days. However, there is a tendency that the price will surge further once the date for Vassil mainnet launch approaches. So now we're gonna look at the overall market and then we'll zone in the Bitcoin and Ethereum market cap. So currently on coinmarketcap.com, the total cryptocurrency market cap is 992 billion. So I put some lines on this for you so you could see we were in the last seven days at the one trillion mark, a little bit above it, but then we went back down and it looks like we're still, we're now in another upward trajectory. So this is the coin 360 for my visual learners. 
and this is the one week performance chart heat map with market cap black size. And I want to zone in on the Bitcoin dominance. This week it's at 36.97. Last week it was at 38%. And weeks prior, it typically stood strong at 40%. So that earlier article I just read about the Bitcoin dominance being reduced is being visually seen here on the heat map. And you could see that Ethereum's block is getting a little bit bigger. But also I want to take note on this heat map that you're going to see is that the USDC and USDT is red. So you can see that people are going more into the altcoins, thus the stable coins, USDC and USDT, seemed to be being a little bit more liquidated and turned into altcoins. So I would suggest you guys check your portfolios to see if you're up today. I want to tell you a little bit about this one. ULUNC is up 204%. So in the event that you had purchased Terra when it took a tank a few months ago, you may want to check your portfolio because there could be some profit there for you. So we are going to use the Crypto Mastery Online Indicators to look at the Ethereum and the Bitcoin charts right now. If you're not a subscriber and you want to check them out, you can go to CryptoMastery.online and then you'll be able to get a lot of extensive tutoring and training on how to use the indicators. So here is Bitcoin USD one week performance chart with the Crypto Mastery indicators applied. You can see that the average true range for Bitcoin is still showing down and the early reversal has not come in in the last few weeks. Because this is a one week chart, each one of those candlesticks is representing a week. So we're still waiting for that early reversal for Bitcoin to go up. The trend indicator is in a down position at this point. You can see the trend line is red. The radar is showing that the 60 day, 60 minute and the four hour and the one day is up. But for the one week average, Bitcoin is down. The signal line is showing that it is moving upward, but you can see it's sideways and the gold line and the green line are tight. So therefore, we're still waiting for some separation in that and some more momentum moving upward, but it's not strong enough yet. The TSI, the trend strength indicator is the fourth one down and you can see the red arrows on that are showing that it is in a downward direction. The volatility index is super low. It's at a 4.32. So that's exciting for acquisition moments. Uh, but at this point, you may want to wait and see if we get some more signals of Bitcoin going up before any acquisition. However, this cannot be financial advice as I'm not a financial advisor. So this is just educational purposes. So let's check out Ethereum one week performance chart with the crypto mastery indicators. The early reversal. Still, we're waiting for that to come in for upward direction. The average true range is still in the downward direction. The trend indicator is a little bit of green, but there's been some resistance, so it hasn't triggered in the last three weeks a number. Therefore, we are not in an upward uh, steady direction on a one week basis. You could see on the radar, it shows that the one hour is up, but the four hour average is down. The one day is up and the one week is up at the moment. The signal line is going in an upward direction and the trend strength is getting tight and it did not uh, come up with a green uh, arrow for the last week. And the volatility index for Ethereum is at a 16.98, a little bit higher than Bitcoin. So in our basket, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So we're going to look at some hot movers in the basket. So we have VGX up 48%, ATC, Ethereum DOT, Ethereum BTC, Ethereum USD, Ethereum DAI, CRV, Wi-Fi, YFI2, uh, AV, ICP, ZEC, B, B, uh, Bitcoin Cash, and SUKU. So the watchlist coins, are these are what are up for the moment, but also these are what the radar is showing are, that are up for the one day and the one week. So when you're on TradingView and you have a watchlist, you can organize your watchlist by percentage change 
the amount of change in your price, the last price, the symbol name. You can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what's ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell. And these are coins that are up for the day and the week, but I always do look for the coins on the floor, so I'm ready for my next buy. So we're gonna look at the crypto screener, and this is not the screener for this week. Um, this is a quick little uh, overview of a screener. You can filter by Coinbase, but all of this in these tutorials are gonna be in the members area of cryptomastery.online. So you can just uh, subscribe to the URL above and you can get the more in-depth training there. So these are some of the indicators that you will get with Crypto Mastery, the volatility index, the early reversal indicator, the dynamic ATR, which is average true range, the trend indicator, the trend strength indicator, the radar screener, and the signal line. And then here's some quick slides that you'll see inside the members area that will teach you more about these indicators. So again, you can go to cryptomastery.online and we are gonna get into some live charts now. And this is going to be the meat and potatoes of this show today. So Joe is on the line and you guys can put your questions in anytime you're ready. Peter said, I'm grateful you are starting. Thank you. You're welcome, Peter. All right. Super. Hi, Susie. How's it going? Hi, everyone. It's great. Okay. okay, I was just over here looking for some potential coins to review. And um, for anyone new that's starting off, I actually find these coins uh, under the crypto screener. So, Susie, if you click on the crypto screener, and uh, yeah. what we do is, is we remove the excess columns, the ones you don't need, and we just want the technical rating with the exchange that you're uh, doing uh, trading with. And this information here is, is generic information, you know, by itself. The information is really useless. You know, it's, it's if you can imagine the GPS and having the address to your friend's house, but not actually knowing how to get there. Um, when we use this generic information with the chart overlays, now it becomes uh, a tool, a tool that we can use to put more odds in our favor to be successful. And this generic information helps us. Uh, ship through all the markets that they have on the brokerage so that we can find um, potential opportunities right away. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the coins that I found here, and this was just giving uh, uh, ERI, this is, uh, or this was yesterday, ANKRBTC. Oh, you know what? One second. I got to take. So, guys, remember if you have a color coding in there, then you can change that. So, I want to see if I can find it. A N K. You can also type it in that uh, box. All right. In a certain... What was the other ending of it? USD? Yeah, right there. Uh, no, the ending of it was BTC. Okay. And uh, on that crypto screener, do you see under performance where it has that? Oh. I just wanted to show uh, where it has that uh, magnifying glass on the performance to the left, down. Yeah, right. Right. If you type the symbol right there, you can also find it that way. Just if anyone is following along. Along, that's how you uh, different ways that you can use the uh, trading view to find the coins. Oh, you know what? I just typed over. Okay, so let me look over you. Wow, wow. So if you just a heads up, guys, when you touch these indicators, then all the data comes right back. So you would just need to go back and and remove your columns to get just a very simple perspective. And that's. So 
this is the way Joe would have it, just like this, and then technical rating and Coinbase. Okay. And, and for in, yeah, and also for anyone following along, if while we're going over these, if you have a coin or a question, please ask, and then we can pull up the coin and, and review it as well. All right, Joe. So here is your A N K. Yeah. So if you notice in there, we had the ERI print the other day. So the right one. This is the right one. Yeah. Well, this one here is, this is, is good right here, um, as well. Um, this isn't the right one. I <laughs> think I gave you the wrong one. Oh, but, let, let, uh, let me see. Let's see if we can find the one that you're doing because I'm just doing Coinbase. And then strong buy. No, no, but, um, I gave it to you wrong though. It's O R and B T C. O R. Okay. O R N. Yeah, B T C. Beautiful. Sorry about that. That's okay. Okay. I better put these glasses and is it, back um, on. And I have mine <laughs> for one day. Do you have yours set for one week or one day? Uh, I'm on, on um, one day. Okay. All right, I'm just trying to find out mine. Okay, so I'm going to shrink this down. We'll just check this one out. Awesome. Okay, and if you change the chart to the daily. Right. Okay. That's a, a four hour we want daily. Oh. Thanks. Perfect. That's what I was looking for. So um in this case point here, I, I was just found this trading this uh opportunity this morning and uh I wanna go over uh what we're looking for. So in this case point we have the uh, volatility index, which is below the 20. Uh, so that right there would be uh, the first check that we're looking for is uh, letting letting us uh, determine whether in the whether or not the market is in an oversold or overbought condition. So the volatility index is the check. Now above the volatility index, we have the TSI. The TSI today gave its first green uh, dot. And uh, I know because my alert went off um, in here in a bunch of these markets. And uh, so the money is getting shifted around. Uh, second is, is that we have the signal line, which just started to cross. Now, the signal line happened today as well. So now the um, the trend has not given us the bell alert, but it's giving us the key. So tomorrow, most likely, we may have a potential bell alert, and this is going to be your last chance uh, before the trend should develop. And the that we're waiting for. I'm going to pull it right here, waiting on the bell alert. And today we got the ERI. And you have all no. green on the radar. Yeah. And it's like we were discussing last week that we're coming into a new month, and this is after the holiday, so we're seeing. Uh, all these different trades, uh, potential uh, uh, new opportunities, and as well as what's happening with the Ethereum merge. Good find. Right. 
I, mean, I always try to find things like like right away, uh, you know, so that you know you can learn how to set your alerts, and during the week there may be another opportunity. Up, oh, I just found another ERI here. Now this is a different setup, but I think it's something good in here for us to look at. Which one okay. is that? This is W C F G B T C. Yeah, so it's everybody leaving Bitcoin for other altcoins. This is exciting. <laughs> All right. Now, this one here, what's different about this one? Let's talk about what's different. Okay. The first thing in here is what's different is that the TSI is still red. So that's why this is called uh, ERI, early reversal indicator, because it's going to come in earlier. And in this case point, it came in earlier before the TSI. Now, once you get that, ERI print, if you don't see that volatility index down, it may never go down. So in this case point, I wouldn't be looking for the volatility index to go into the red. The next green on that TSI could mark the potential confirmation and movement up from this ERI. So what I can do, though, is set my alert for the TSI. Are you want so to I'm going to the, the green. Go okay, so guys, notice I, I went into the alert and I did, you can do red, meaning if you're going to short the market, but we're American here, so we, well, at this, I'm a U.S. resident, so I have to do a buy. So I'm just going to say um, TSI green. You, you know, Susie, and, and the red can be used for exit. So if you're in the, in the using the TSI, and it's green, you can set the red for a potential exit, early exit. And in this case point, you're looking for a confirmation to the ERI, so we can set it for green. Perfect. And I'm notice, guys, I'm typing this in a way that I understand it. So you type it in the way that you understand it. I'm going to say create. Because that you want to put that message in the message box because that's what's going to be emailed to you. Great. So we're also waiting on the signal line. So, Joe, um, I'm just going to, for my stats, I'm only going to put an alert on the TSI because that's probably, and then once that triggers, then I'll go and put an alert on the other two. But you guys may want to, if you're watching this, you may want to set an alert for all three of these. Do you have some other ones you want us to look at? Do you guys have any questions yeah. so far? And, and you know, Susie, just on this, what you're looking for here is, is you're waiting for the, the, the TSI, you're waiting for the signal line, and then you would also be waiting for uh, the trend. Because right now the trend is still right. But all that can happen and change within one day. I'm just going to make sure that I put this on my watch list too, that I have it, WCFG Bitcoin. So I suggest like this whole watch list I have is Coinbase, guys. So there's a lot of things that just pop up new on Coinbase every day and every week. So if there's not a plus next to that, that means I don't have it on my watch list. Now, I'm not picking this coin for euro or pound because I don't work with those so I'm xing out and then now I have them down here so then I can click on this chart and then now I'll code them the way I have my watch list coded when I have something where the day and the week are not matching I code it for it and 
and then I'll click on the next one, check the radar, and then click on the next one and check the radar. So it's orange. So then I'm, what I'm going to do is just click it and drag it into the section, the subsection I have for the day and the week not in alignment, meaning they're not completely. Okay. I'm sorry, to move these, just so you know, you have to click on the chart and then drag. Okay, that's why I would move. Okay. Do you have anything else you want us to look at? Uh, sure, yeah. Let's go in here, right? And let's take a look in here at Plume, P-L-U-U-S-D. And I'm trying to, to just make sense of this and look for the... The markets in here that are just maybe set up eminently so I can show you the best setups. All right. So this right here is similar to the chart we were just looking at before. Right. Because we got the ERI and the ERI, if you look, it took place before the TSI. So we get first we get the ERI. And. Next comes the TSI. Now, in this case point, the volatility index was a little bit more closer. So, so it's a little bit more better on that. So, meaning we have like the, the okay. Yeah, it's, it's meaning that the volatility index guy is at a 32, the other one was a little higher level. So. Ideally, I yeah, like the, to get it when it's on the floor. Then. The closer we can get it to 20, the better. But you can't, um, you know, once the market starts to change direction and you start to see the clues with these other chart overlays, you you can't get stuck on a number and miss the opportunity. So once the TSI right. starts to move higher, like it is now, the, the, this is the first clue that the market has put in a potential bottom. Now we're waiting for it. So we'll be waiting for the signal line and we'll be waiting for the trend indicator. You know, and what's cool in this trading view that once you type in what you're looking for and you save it, now you have your notes right on the screen. So when you're following along with us, you know, um, I encourage you to uh, use the different tools, um, which will really help you become more better at the game. Success to being empowered by knowledge. Oh, I just found another one in here. Similar, same similar setup I'm seeing on a, a bunch of these markets. Um, I, I know it's for coming into the new month. And I also think that a lot of these coins are affected by what's happening with the merge, which is, you know, really the wild card in all this. You know, what's some people think. Okay. Now this next one, let's go to the uh, the Ethereum Bitcoin. This one's a little different. ETH BTC. Now, what's different on this case point with this? And I thought, like with everything that's happening with the merger, this is one of the markets that, like, I'm looking at the China trying to figure out which way the market is going. But one of the things in particular you notice, Susie, that it, it broke the ATR. And a lot of times you yeah. don't really hear me mention the ATR because the ATR may be in motion already. And once the ATR is in motion, uh, it's used as a level in there to trail a position because it lags. But in this case point, when the market um, is become strong and the market is going to make its move, this is dictating 
a possible new leg in a cycle, which means is that uh, it, it put a higher high in, like it took out that high from over there on the 15th, Susie. Like if you put a horizontal line right there, yeah. On the 15th? Yeah, well, that high, I'm trying to get the high on the 15th when it went up that first time. Okay, right here? This one? Yeah, up, right up there at the top. Yeah, that high okay. right there. Usually, this becomes, what was resistance becomes support. So when we put a horizontal line right there, you can see in there how, like, it's just, you know, it's just popped uh, up there today strong. Yeah, I was trying to get the the how much last time the average true range triggered for Ethereum Bitcoin and how much it went up. Just wanted to see Good like idea. past performance of this. So I'm just say like around here where it started, and then we can go to the all time high. So it went up 40% in 30 days. And if you hit the all time high, but then collectively. Let's just kind of see where it started, and then when the um, when it stopped, if you if you didn't get it out when it was in those higher areas, then you would be at 29% in 43 days. Wow. And it's interesting, you know, with Ethereum, guys. If you notice, the candlesticks are all green. And they go way above the top Keltner band. So to me, that's a little, uh, I would need to pull back into a one week chart if I was getting in on this because personally, I feel like it's a little high to buy because it's above that Keltner band on the one day. And then right here, I would say that it's um, in the over oversold for the one day. Would you be okay if I pulled it back to a one-week chart, Joe, to see where it was at for that? Sure, go ahead. Let's see. Oh, well, let me just clear some of this stuff out. I've done a lot of analyzing of th these two. Yeah, so the one week is still triggering all of that. But it is. It does have that. Um, well, look. I think when it when the market starts on its up move like that, right? Yeah. It's it's completing the cycle in there. So this one here is the bigger wave. Now we don't have that TSI ready yet, but it is overbought. But it doesn't mean that the, there's not more room to go on. Like you see that other high from the beginning of this year. Looks like in November on the left. If, if you yeah, move the horizontal see. line up, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, what it, for the yeah, that, that's what it's yeah. going for. Hope I can get it to move. That one right there. It's like it's, yeah, it's like dangerously yeah. close now. That's what it's going for. It's trying Good. to reach. Yeah, so I'm zoning on that. So it, it's trying to get point zero eight seven five. Yeah, it looks like it it could it could get there. Oh, it's even higher. I just couldn't zone in on that little. All right, so point eight eight seven one. Nice. Well, I definitely think that the the new technology release is is what's gonna potentially keep this one moving. We'll see. The news article we read earlier, it has these conflicting uh, you know, fundamentals with this. But here's the thing, though, Joe, is like it's volatile. It's moving. And so because it's so up and down, if, if you're really working the indicators and you're just ready to jump on these moves, then you could get some real good activity out of this. But if you're just someone that just doesn't really want to swing trade, then what would you recommend, Joe? If you're just kind of like a, a one month in and a one month out type of person, what would you do if you were in that situation here? Well, the, the, the tools can be used two ways. 
right? You know, the the uh, the time frame that I like to look at is like the daily. So, like here's another one, for example, on the daily ZRX BTC. ERX. Yeah, ZRX. Now, and once we get to the um, the chart, it depends on how everything is positioned. Now, each time in there, each market is a different case point. But what we're really looking for is we're really looking for how everything is positioned in positioned in the trend. Like, did we miss the trend? So when we look at this chart in here. And we start to see in here the TSI, right? The TSI is up here by the blue. Now, Susie, if you draw um, a vertical line on the like a, or a T on the TSI, yeah, right there, an arrow. Now, if you put another arrow on the 22nd, where the where the, when you get the first green dot on the TSI, like um. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, the first green dot. So basically right here. No, no, to the do left you want me to more, the on the 20th. Yeah, I, no, I just want you to put an arrow on the date, the 22nd. Just keep the chart the way it is. Okay. There you go. This one? Uh, the one, take, move that to the left, to the date of the 22nd. Right there. The twenty, uh, that one, okay, right there. Twenty-fourth, yeah. that one. Yeah, and if you can put another arrow up at the ERI, up at the top, on that same day. On the twenty-second, right here. Yes. So basically, like around right around that time. Yeah, but but this don't um don't put a vertical line because I want it to show. Okay, yeah, just like that. And if you can make the chart a little tighter. Perfect. And, and what I'm trying to point out is, is that when we had the setup two weeks ago on the 22nd, all right, on a scale from 1 to 10, that setup was like almost a 10. It was the first green dot on the TSI. The TSI was oversold. And at that point, we were waiting for the signal line. We were waiting for the trend. Now, when we take a look at this ERI, the TSI is different. It's all the way up at the top. Now, what does that mean? That means that it's not a 10 anymore. On a scale from 1 to 10, it may be a 5. It's 50-50 once. Once that TSI gets up to the top, it may have exhausted itself. So we want to try to position ourselves with trades where we have everything in our favor. And one of the things I just want to point out is the value of that first green dot on the TSI. So now knowing what we know, Right? If we go back to the other chart, Susie, right? That OR. Which one do you want to go back to? ORN BTC. And I just wanted to point out the positioning of the TSI. So when you get the, the, the ERI to trigger, you always look at like how's my chart positioned? How's my TSI positioned? If your TSI is close to oversold, it's close to that green down there, that's a great setup. But if that TSI starts to climb higher, the more it starts to become climb higher, the more the time expires on how great that setup was. And um You know, uh, you know, well, you know, this right here is is a little bit more set up better than the other chart. So I just wanted to point out is that it's really important to uh, ask yourself that question as a trader: How's my setup look? 
because if you're able to say, well, um, on, this is a five, and then you can say this is a ten, you, you're you're growing at that point because you have to be able to judge, uh, so you know how valuable the opportunity is, because sometimes when you get these opportunities, they may just happen in front of you and you may see them, but it doesn't mean that you're making uh, or reaching the goals, the financial goals that you would like to reach with with the market. So, you know, I'm, I'm pointing out the information is here. You just have to be reactive to it. Let me see if I can find another one. So can I add to that? Like the other sure. sign that I think is really amazing about this one is on the top ERI and average true range indicator, those candlesticks are red, which reflects the volatility index being an oversold, which means in my book, it's on super sale. So when you get to that early reversal indicator and the average true range and those candlesticks are green, it means that on the volatility index area, it's in the oversold. So this is, if this continues to move up, you have a larger zone to grow upward in. So it could be, it's it's got more more room to grow, I would say, before it hits the ceiling. This is a really good potential one. I do like that. Thanks for sharing. I wrote it down. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> In the past, though, you know, but also my expectations of this are not going to be super big. And the reason why at the moment is because if you look at the past performance, it doesn't get green candlesticks on the one day chart. So. I would probably tend to sell when it's in the let the cake bake zone. Look at the past performance and volatility index. It doesn't get to the ceiling. So, you know, I guess I should reverse on what I said a little bit because we want it to get up to there. So do check out the past performance on whatever you're looking at and see like, hey, does it reach the top to overbought? So, um, but this is a really good one to learn on just to see you do have the red candlesticks in the average true range but uh but, but let's find one that actually we'll, we'll see if we can find one that actually does go to the ceiling yeah and then it, you know one of the things uh one of these uh if you change that um or when you're done if we go in here to the bitcoin Bitcoin USD? Yeah. I just wanted to point out, this is another one where when we get the next green dot on the TSI, it's going to become really important because uh, it looks like the signal line has crossed, the volatility index is down. I, the market is just really looks like it's just drifting right now at this point. So we may see some type of uh, 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 short covering um, you know, for me to get bullish on this market, we would have to break that ATR level because that, that ATR has just been uh, going down. And uh, the, ex the, the ATR really sets the expectation for the market. No, there is a, the signal line going green gives some hope there. That cross, yes. Yeah. Me. Well, you know what they call this? They call this like a, a dead cat bounce it, because there's no momentum behind it. It's it's trying though. So it looks like it's trying, but unless we get back above that that ATR level, which comes in above, like looks like uh, that number's right at about what. 20,000? Uh, do you want to get to the, the first or the second line? Well, we want the, the, the red one, which is the ATR one. So on the right-hand side, it's 21. Oh, nine. this one. Yeah. yeah. 
and mm -hmm. and and until that until this market breaks this it may just keep drifting lower yeah. well with with the ethereum momentum right now it's it's stealing the dominance from bitcoin and then you can just see those peers you just showed us it's people using their bitcoin to buy altcoins because they're seeing the news and the news is saying hey you know bitcoin and ethereum may have some competition with each other with dominance levels but you know it doesn't seem like everyone's going into ethereum they're really going into the altcoins so it'll be interesting to see you know where bitcoin ends up in the next month or two in comparison to the other coins you know, the overall market cap is still staying relatively you know between it's bobbling between 900 trillion to 1 trillion. So that's happening. So, so it's a lot of good stuff going on. It's a good time to keep watching. We have six minutes left. So if you guys have your questions, please um, put them in the questions box. No, we'll just go on for a few more minutes. If you could change it over to an Ethereum, we'll just close out on this chart. Sure, yeah. And if, uh, yeah, there you go. We'll go to the left. So um, basically, what we want to first talk about is let's talk about here the first the the first. Let's talk about the ERIs first that we had, the green ones, right? The ones that we had that were early. So we had this one here, which was on the twenty third. You can put a little arrow there, Susie. Sure. Okay. And so we got the first one. And if you look at the first one, right, the TSI gave us a green dot. So we'll put another arrow down at the TSI. Right. And the market failed. Right. And that's going to happen, and that's that's called trading, right? Not every setup is a hundred percent, but sometimes when you get a fail like that, it's not really like for a lot of points, and that's why it's important you have staying power in your positioning, because the next ERI that came, Susie, this is the one we got the actual it's short covering. So you put an arrow right there, yep, and and look at the TSI. Right, this rate, that was your setup right there. Okay, because because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. The only thing we know is what's our imminent setup, and. That's the same consistency within the setups that we keep reviewing with you because this is the game. Those are high probability setups. So now we got a couple of bars where the market starts to go higher. We see the TSI going higher. And, you know, it looks like the trend indicator is just starting to turn. Now, we did get the uh, red ERI, which is early. And, and you know, um, you can scale out of positioning. I, I don't use that to go completely flat when I'm in the market. I, I, you know, I do a lot of scale and scale out of my position. But that right there um, was uh, something that took place. Now, um, if you look at when that took place, the day after, it looks like that was right when the signal line went up. So uh, sometimes you may get divergence when the market starts to turn. And uh, it looks like the course that we're heading for is that we're, we may get a bell alert, Susie, tomorrow. It looks like today it's giving the key. So what we'd be doing is, is we'd be, uh, you can set your alert for the red on the TSI to take a profit, or early profit. So if you're long in this market, one of the things you want to do is, is set your alert for the TSI to exit, which is the red uh, dot okay. 
So alert is okay. set. So. All right, and then you'd be waiting for your bell alert. And that may take place tomorrow on the trend. Okay, and uh, this market has already started to trend up higher, so you don't need to really risk a lot on this trade um, for your positioning. And you'd be looking forward to uh, maybe make higher highs when the uh, bell alert happens. So, you know, if you look at that high, Susie, on the 15th, what is that? 2000? Like at least back up to 1800, at least. I mean, I don't know if it's going to um, keep going after this. these different phases of, of what's happening with that network take place, if it'll break that 2,000. But I'll tell you, if we're going to close above 2,000, I'm, I'm in this market right now, I'd be a happy boy because I feel like now it has the potential in there um, where it could be uh, moving back up to that 25, 30 area. And, and I, I believe that, this would gain faster than the Bitcoin as it has done in the past. Like, you know, on the last bull run that we had, I remember that the Bitcoin gain and the Ethereum gaining faster than the Bitcoin and it was trading up at 3,035. I, I would love to see that happen. But um, we need to uh, break some key levels to confirm that. Uh, 2,000, we want to see a close above that. And then right now, the ATR is very important. So we have to watch that ATR. Uh, All so right. Well, that's thanks, it. guys, for coming today. Yeah, it's great to have you. And I'm looking forward to see how this new technology and the merge with Ethereum and then the Cardano, too, how everything unravels this week. So safe trading. Make sure that you set your alerts. And today, I think the biggest takeaway, hopefully you guys saw that, is when um, I did the TSI alert to take profit. So when you get in, now you know how to do your take profit alert. And um, add alert. Remember, you have the red to take profit and the green to get in. So I think that's going to be pretty helpful for you guys this week. And remember, you always have the paper trading on TradingView that you can work with so that you can actually put trades in uh, before you actually start uh, managing your own portfolio. So look forward to your questions next week. And Joe, do you have anything you want to say before we jump off? Uh, no, good luck trading, everyone. And uh, we'll see if we get some follow through from these setups that we discussed. Thank you.